Hi, welcome to our garden. I want to take this opportunity to show you around the different areas of our garden. We worked on this and have gradually developed it over about 20 years and have added a rain garden and a rain barrel and a number of pollinator plants. Thank you to Green Venture for highlighting all the good things happening in terms of green infrastructure in the region. As gardeners, we can have a huge impact on, the, on climate change and adding biodiversity by what we plant and how we garden. It's brought us tremendous enjoyment and I look forward to showing it to you. You may wonder how we got started in this project. I've had an interest in pollinators for quite some time, specifically butterflies and providing host plants. But that naturally led to wanting to add more native plants. And we began, my husband and I, to seek out information. We attended a workshop provided by the conservation areas about stormwater and managing stormwater on your landscape. Um, from there, I also volunteered with organizations to remove invasive plants. And that led to a concern about aggressive plants in our gardens. And I ended up joining Halton Master Gardeners, which is part of the Master Gardeners of Ontario. So that all came together to create our landscape. Hi, I'm standing in the midst of our rain garden. This is the base down here. It's a bit of an unusual rain garden because it's in the shade, mostly shade. Uh, the stormwater from our house flows from half of the roof into a, a drain which flows out into the swale. And there's been a lot of rain in the last few days and the rain flowed quite quickly down and filled this area here which contains plants that are specific for a rain garden. They're native, which have deeper roots, and they can withstand dry conditions as well as being submerged for a couple of days. But looking at the base of it now, there is no standing water at all because it drains into the soil and permeates deeply into the soil. And it's minimized any issues near the house of stormwater. So now we're on the back half of our house and in this corner we have our rain barrel which uh, is functional through spring, summer, fall. We shut it down through the winter and we have it permanently hooked up to a hose that goes behind our deck here along the edge and into a garden that really absorbs a lot which is mostly ferns and a redbud tree and some native flowers. We leave our valve open on the rain barrel all the time to drain into this garden area. As you can see for most of our garden, it's in the shade. And our one area that was in the sun, it's turned out to be one of our nicest areas because we have swamp milkweed, patesia, uh, coreopsis, and pale coneflower, purple coneflower, and agastache, um, which attracts a lot of pollinators, a lot of bees and butterflies. In fact, we've had a monarch just visiting. Uh, but I want to point out one area of this garden where we have clematis growing up the trellis, which provides beautiful spring color. But I've added in the native clematis, clematis virginiana, which is just starting to grow up and I will provide fall color. So it's really easy to look at an exotic plant and then find a comparable native plant that will fill the same role in your garden. I just want to highlight that there are native plants for every type of growing situation. And in our backyard here, we have more difficult growing conditions because they're under the sh deep shade of maple trees. And so we have this beautiful Cornus alternifolia, which is the pagoda dogwood, a native. Uh, you find it around Hamilton commonly, and it can grow in dry shade. Underneath it, we have a carex, which is a grass-like plant, um, beautiful lime green. It's a plantain sedge or seersucker sedge that grows beautifully in moist or dry. In behind, there's three northern bush honeysuckle, which has a beautiful, delicate little yellow flower that is very hardy in difficult growing conditions, as well as 
a couple of purple flowering raspberries um, that provide food for the birds. I just want to conclude by saying that this has become a passion for both my husband and I, but it is not more work to have a garden like this. We enjoy the biodiversity that we've provided through the plants, how we manage the soil, the fact that we don't need to water the plants once they're established, and we don't have a lawnmower that, uh, except to mow, mow the uh, city allowance. And it's so much more pleasurable. Thank you so much for coming. And I just really want to emphasize that this kind of a project is very doable. Just taking it piece by piece and gradually as, as you can manage it in your garden. And I hope that by watching this, you'll begin to make some changes in your own garden.